hold tightly on to anything that is protruding because this video is all about falling in the Mithras rule set. If you want to put the fear into any player, ask them to climb up or down a cliff using a series of athletic skill rolls. This is not because of the fear of climbing, quite the opposite actually. It's because of the fear of falling. Not only are they worried about bouncing down the rock face, they're also probably aware that in Mithras, when you take falling damage, armor points do not reduce the damage. In this video, we're going to have a look at the three different aspects of falling. First, falling from a great height. Secondly, falling objects that are not characters, but are falling onto them. And finally, thirdly, falling from a vehicle. The amount of damage a character takes from falling depends on the height that the character falls. There is a complete table in the core rulebook on page 78. But as an example, if a character falls between 6 and 10 meters, then they will take 2d6 points of damage to two random hit locations. As the distance that they fall goes up, so does the amount of damage and the number of random hit location that they'll take damage to. So a character falling 16 to 20 meters will take 4d6 worth of damage to four random locations. Ouch. And to make it double ouch, the damage is not rolled and spread between those locations. That is the damage taken on each location. Ouch, ouch. Now, any character who completes a successful acrobatics check can reduce the damage. If the roll is a success, the fall is treated as if it's two meters less than what it actually is. Coupled with this, as long as the acrobatic character doesn't suffer a serious or major wound due to the falling damage, they can actually land on their feet rather than prone. By the way, if the GM allows it, the character can also take half damage if they fall onto a soft surface, but only if the GM allows. Before we leave falling down a cliff, we need to quickly mention the size of the character. Characters or creatures whose size is less than nine take less damage. With the total distance they fall being reduced for the damage purposes, there's a complete list for this on page 78. In a similar way, creatures larger than size 20 suffer more damage. So any really small people with acrobatics are going to take less damage. Two really important skills. Okay, so that's falling from a great height all sorted. Next up, falling objects. An object will impart damage based on its size and the distance it falls. For each six points of size or fraction thereof, the object will cause 1d6 points of damage. In addition to this damage, it will also inflict damage from the distance that it's fallen. This is taken from that same table on page 78. And finally, being thrown from a vehicle or diving from a chariot or something like that. So when trying to calculate the amount of damage a character will suffer getting thrown from a vehicle, you need to be slightly creative and mathematical. So the first thing is that you need to determine the speed of the moving vehicle. You then compare that speed to the falling damage using the distance fallen table on the core rule book of 78. But 
as well as that table being used, you actually half the damage that it says is going to take place. So, for example, if it says it will do 4d6 worth of damage, then being thrown from a vehicle at that speed will only take 2d6 worth of damage. I hope this gives you some ideas for your campaign. Covered pits are always a favourite of mine in dungeon, but you can also have bare pits or just deep chasms across your countryside. Coupled with that, you can have giants throwing huge boulders or even small goblins, or you can fling the characters out of a wagon as it is being chased around the streets of your favourite town. Just be creative and surprise your players with those, that falling damage. If you found this or any of my videos on my channel helpful or even entertaining, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. And if you would like to provide further support, then please consider using the super thanks button to donate money or consider to becoming a supporter of the channel, which gives you early access to videos and an exclusive monthly video where I discuss my ideas and tasks for the future. Oh, and there's also my Ko-fi page, which is the one-stop place for all RPG content that also has a donation button. Sorry, I won't mention it again. Until next time, I hope all your posed roles are successful and you manage to survive the fall down that chasm. Thanks for watching, everyone. See ya. Bye.